Hey there, uh, Ron here. Well, thank you for coming to this video. You're gonna be really impressed. Wait till you see the deals that we did in this deal structuring session. So I thought I'd take a second and tell you what this is all about before you get into it. Almost every place we go that we are teaching, whether it be our one-day seminar or our four-day boot camp, we ask students to bring in property information sheets so we can call them while they're there. Now, some of them do, some of them don't. Frankly, our VAs generate most of the leads for them anyway. And remember that when, if I see you live, uh, get our VAs to bring in leads because if we're calling leads for you, we very well be able to make some deals for you. So what happens is I'm teaching during the morning and I got a team out calling your leads and some of them turn into deals. Usually we get five or six deals even in our one day seminar. When we do this during our four day boot camp, golly, we get 15, 20 deals easily during that time. You're about to see what I mean when I say, what is a deal? So the video that's attached here is one we take live while we're in class and the students brought in these deals. So we got some very, very happy students in that class that day as you're about to see. So go watch the video and when you get a chance, come see the old guy. Hey, better come see me while I can still remember what to say. And I'm looking forward to you doing just that. So keep, keep an eye on uh, what we're doing and where we're doing it. It's all over our website, ronlegrand.com, and you're probably gonna get an email on it anyway if you get this video. But I wanna see you in this class as soon as possible with a handful of leads so we can help you get a deal. Not only do we negotiate it for you on the phone, but we'll help you write a contract before you leave the class and make an appointment for you to go out to the seller's house if you wish. So watch the video, see you soon. Okay, what's your name? Tommy. Tommy? Tommy. Okay, yes. that's good. Oh. So we got a great deal here. Let me tell you about it. All right, I need my Elmo. Nick, John, okay. So uh, the other thing I wanted to say is real estate has given me the opportunity. So I know a lot of you have a passion out there that you want to do real estate because you want to make a lot of money because you want to do mission or you want to do this or you want to travel. Real estate's where it's at and you can do it. Okay. So back. this deal, I'll move it. I gotta see it. What's the ARV? Okay, the ARV is six hundred and seventy-nine thousand dollars. I like it already. Guess what the asking is? We got this negotiated for five seventy-five. That means it's a hundred and four thousand dollar profit with no money down for our two-year owner financing. Wait a minute. Now I'm supposed to get it down. Oh. To, you got to build it up down to the crescendo Sorry, down I at the bottom. Learn that right. part. Jeez, I gotta train you. All right. So the ARV is. Seven six eighty. Yes, six eighty. Yes. Six eighty and they're asking five seventy five. Yeah. Did anybody check the ARV? Yes, we did. You check it? We did on All the right. estate agency. All right. She's a realtor, so she knows how to look up comps. And it has got a loan on it for one first and a second? Yes. Okay, and the total payments are twenty five hundred twenty five hundred use the mic. Twenty five hundred a month. That's pretty the first, cheap on a seven hundred. Uh, that's not a including month. taxes and insurance. The oh, it's first not. and second scroll up, Ron. Yeah, the, that's the first and second, and then a little bit more. The taxes are 520 a month, and the insurance is 126. Total payment is 3171. Well, with the HOA, no, plus the HOA, 3171 is the total payment, and then including the HOA is 3456. Now the rent rate, he had it rented for 3430. There's no spread in the monthly, but I think you can work it out with a hundred and four thousand dollar profit. You think? Thanks. Okay, because your terms are nothing down. Nothing down to okay. your owner financing. So how'd you get him to take nothing down? Well, we did. Huh. <laughs> oh. I did. <laughs> you just said to him, uh, we usually buy with nothing down? No, actually I said, and he is a realtor, right? He is a realtor. So here's what I did, just to confirm. I asked him the terms and I says, okay, so let me get this straight. You will take 11, oh, what is it? Whatever. Uh, yeah, the payments per month Quit for two years. Quit moving my sheet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So you'll take this payment for two years, and that's all you need, right? I said, okay, so. So he named the two years, though. Absolutely. He named the two years. We were started at 12, 18. I got him up to 24 months. And I asked him three times, so, okay, so that's all you need, right? We just need to make the payment for two years, and you don't need anything else, right? All right. right. So, okay, so. Okay, well, what don't I like about this deal? 
There's two things I don't like. You guys tell me what they are. I don't like the term, and I don't like the payment. Can I do anything about the payment? Therefore, I must be willing to accept the payment to proceed. Correct? And if I accept the payment to proceed, I know I'm not going to get any monthly spread, most likely. Right. Agreed? In fact, should I consign myself that I might even have a little negative? Okay. Well, let's see if we can overcome that. But I can tell you right now, we're not doing two years. No. What I would say to him was we usually get 30. He's going to say, no way. We tried that. Well, then I rarely do them for less than 10. We tried that. settle for five. Well, I don't care. You ain't me. Right? We're going to get at least five years. Now, would we do the deal? Would you do the deal, Tommy, if you only get the two? Maybe yes. Maybe or maybe not. What? Yes. All right. Why? Um, put a tenant in it for 12 months. So that gives you time to put a tenant in there that you actually do want to get qualified and cash yeah, it out. Yeah, cash it out. Okay, well, what happens if two years goes by and they haven't bought it yet? Um, I'll ask him to renew it. Okay, what if he says no? Next deal. What if he says no? What are you going to do? I'll ask him if he wants us to continue making monthly payments. Okay. And we can extend So it. you're going to just tell him, look, uh, we can renew it or you can have it back if you choose. I mean, I'd rather renew it. Yes? Yes. So what's the worst he can say? I'll take it back. But if he takes it back, let's see what happens before he gets it back. Right. Now look. Now look. You're not going to put a tin of fire in there for more than two years, are you? Or do I have to tell you this? Hmm? You got a two-year balloon on this mortgage. Do I have to tell you you shouldn't put a tenant in there that takes longer than two years? You can't give a three-year balloon. Are we clear on this, or is it just too late for you to care anymore? <laughs> we clear? All right. So we got to give them, in fact, I, I'd probably just give them a one-year balloon. I mean, not a balloon. I'm lease optioning it. There's no balloon in the lease option. There's a term. So I'd put them in there and give them one year to cash me out, which is pretty much normal anyway. That's what most investors do, isn't it? But the good news is, house in excellent condition, four bedroom, four bath, 2,942 square feet. So two car garage. Oh, wait a minute. This is a townhouse. So that's why it has association dues on it? Yes. Okay. Here in Virginia. Here yes. in Virginia? Yes. All right. Is this a good area, Tommy? Yes. All right. And you checked the comps. We did. We, at right. first, we thought it was 2,600 square feet, and I thought, I don't know. And then I said, can you go check down on the county records? Uh, you know, know they're not hearing a word you say. Okay. <laughs> At first, we thought it was 2,600 square feet. And I said, no, we don't have a deal here because we checked the comps. And then I asked him, go check county records, make sure, because the lead sheet said 26, is it something else said 29. So now it's 29. We did check comps again and confirmed that it is between 670 to 679,000 is the R. Twenty six hundred or twenty nine. No, it's twenty nine. Right. Whatever. Okay. So what are we going to sell it for, Tommy? Six eighty. Six eighty nine nine. I can live with that. Sure can. But here's the goodies. How much are we going to get down? At least sixty. Okay. At least sixty. I'll buy that. All right. And that means they owe us six thirty. And we only owe 575. This is probably one you want to get sold quick, isn't it, Tommy? Yes. So that's 55,000 on the back end and 60 on the front end with no spread per month. So Tommy, what happens if you can't get that $3,500 a month and somebody comes in and you only get 3,000? I'll make the payments for it with the down. That's the right answer. You've been listening for the last two days, haven't you? All right. He can take that $60,000 and make a $500 a month payment if he has to out of it for a lousy year, can he? All right, so let's don't forget common sense here, which doesn't seem to be all that common. You don't, you don't go blowing a good deal because you have a negative cash flow every month, especially when you know you're going to get a great big chunk of money up front. All right, so, well, you know what to do. What's the first step? Get the contract signed. Correct. Well, first we've got to get the contract. Then we've got to let her check it. Then you take it out and get it signed. You already did that. Okay. Well, you're ahead of me there. You got, you got
You got a mentor? Not yet. You're going to get one, though, aren't you? Yes. And what's her name? Barbara. That's the right answer. <laughs> She's already into your deal, man. So here's, here's what bothers me if you don't, man. I mean, honestly, let's talk about logistics here. When's your appointment? Um, next week, I think. I don't see it on here. Thursday. When is it? Better oh, figure it out. Okay. Here's the thing. You will not technically, formally have her set up as your mentor by the time of your appointment. So you need to get uh, with her right now, and get signed up, and make sure you get access to her to help you through this deal before you're technically in the program. Make sense? Okay, do not blow, oh my God, if you blow this deal, oh, oh. It's bad. If you blow this deal, you better not let me know about it. <laughs> Look at that money. Yeah. It's so over 100 grand on this one deal, and it's got to come in within a year. So, you know, even if they don't close, he still gets that non-refundable option deposit that goes in his pocket. You get that, right? And, you know, there is another way, if you, if you wanted to, could he put this thing on the market for the 680 that it's worth and just list it with a realtor? Yep. He's got a lot of spread there, don't he? Well, he's going to give up 6%. So, you know, he gives up a big chunk of his profit. But that is an option when you've got this much room in it. It's not one I like. Where'd you find the deal? It was um, Fisbo Leads. Fisbo from the Leads. Gold Club. Okay, it's a Gold Club lead? Yes. Gee, Christmas. I'm going to have to raise the price of this Gold Club thing. <laughs> Unbelievable. $100,000, like that. I hope uh, somebody's writing these down back there now. I don't want to lose track of them. I'm going to do a recap tomorrow morning on where we're at now with all these leads because they're mounting fast, aren't they? Okay, thank you. No, I don't. Okay, you do now. If John will make it hot, you got a mic. You got it. Yep. Rich? You're good. Hello? Can you guys hear me? Not yet. <laughs> all right. Who we got? Rich from California. Okay, as soon as we get hot here. All right. Uh, sounds like it's on. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we're in California, Ron. We've got a uh, $550,000 home uh, willing to sell with owner financing. 10-year term. 550 is the ARV? Uh, no, uh, the ARV is 630. Oh, okay. So they're willing to give us $80,000 worth of equity. Well, there's there's a catch on this one. We'll get to that. All right. Um, and he only owes 399, 339. Yep. And he's, get this, he's $66,000 behind on the mortgage payments. Oh my goodness gracious. Yep. $66,000 at $2,100. He's three years behind, yep. and they haven't filed. They haven't put him out yet. Okay, that you'll find that not very, that's pretty common around the country right now. So, what does he want? Uh, he wants five hundred and fifty thousand for the home on owner financing. Well, he ain't gonna get it. A, a ten-year term. He ain't gonna get it because here's why. If, if he's sixty-six thousand dollars in arrear, first thing we better ask is where's that money gonna come from, and how are we gonna get paid? Well, we're going to put the property under contract and try to negotiate with the bank to put that on the back end of the loan and bring it current. Well, okay, of course, you know you can't negotiate that. They must, the, oh, the sellers must. Right. Okay, you can't deal with the bank with somebody, uh, for somebody else's loan. The sellers is the one who must negotiate with the bank. Of course, we're going to guide them. So what we think we're going to do is get the bank to reinstate the loan and, and add the back due onto the debt which they may do, but they will not do it unless they are convinced that the current homeowners can start making the payments, which means they're going to require some financial statements from them, so probably some proof of income, and you know, they, and, and whatever else I don't know. So it's not going to be a quick deal, but it's probably a deal worth pursuing since there's already $80,000 worth of equity in it. 
Now, if we do reinstate it, all that means is we're taking this $339,000 loan and making it a $400,000 loan. Everybody understand that? Okay, then we'll get the house for free because he, he will take nothing down and a 10-year term, and now it does turn into a deal. Now, what if the bank won't do it? Do we kill it? You can't lease option it when there's $66,000 behind on payments. Somebody's got to make up those payments. And you cannot buy this house and not make up those payments. You most certainly cannot put anybody in it with those payments in arrears. So what's plan two if the bank says no? Now, if the bank says no, they're going to be saying no to him, aren't they? All right, when they're saying no to him, he knows he's kind of screwed, doesn't he? All right. Is this in good shape? Yes. Yes. And it's a... Um, it's a small house though, 1,500 square feet, three bedroom, two bath, all right, and it's vacant. All right, so if it truly is worth $650,000, so this is in California, so this is where most of you live, this is your $150,000 house. Yep. <laughs> you know, that's what it looks like. Um, can we just tell a seller, I'm going to take over your debt and I'm going to make up those payments when I find the buyer and I'm going to pay the closing cost to transfer a title now. Seller, you're not getting anything. Is that plan two? Uh, it's plan two. And if you have to, you can give them a little bit of money on the back end. Now the problem is, if you do that, somebody's got to come to the table with a big chunk of money, don't they? Because by that time, you're going to be $75,000 in arrears. So. Um, could we always get a second mortgage from a private lender for 75 grand behind? I assume this does not include the back payments? Correct. All right. So could we borrow 75 if there's 339 owed and it is worth 650? Yeah. In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. So that'd be plan two is get a private loan for a second and take over the first subject two and maybe the seller, maybe the seller needs 10 or 15 grand. Okay, just borrow that on the second and get the seller out of your life. Make sense? Could we borrow 100? Sure could. We'd only be in it for 4, 439 worth 650. That's a low loan to value ratio. So I'd rather not. I'd rather have the bank reinstate it. But if the bank's not going to, they're, they're still not going to kill my dream of buying this house. But the seller's got to be cooperative. Seller ain't getting 550. I can tell you that right now. Seller is not getting 550. So. Well, unless the bank reinstates, and then I'll give the seller 550 because they're selling it to me with nothing down. We clear? Hello? All right. Somewhere along the line, there's a deal here because you've got a motivated seller here. Definitely. Now, when they get three years behind, they tend to get a little bit motivated. I wonder if they've been served yet. Anybody know? He's got an appointment. Well, good, because it could be they just got served. And then, then that will motivate him a lot more. See, this guy's been sitting in this house for three years, waiting for them to do something. To, three years with a free rent. If he sees that coming to a close, he might be motivated to do something. Uh, doesn't make any, uh, oh, okay, still he's not making a payment. All right, anyway, so what's your exit strategy? I mean, you could do a straight option. You could. Could you just option it and then go sell it? Yeah, that is a possibility as long as the seller's game. What if you did do that? What, if it's worth 650, what if you agreed to give the seller, or 630, what if you agreed to give the seller six, uh, 550? Who'd do that? Based on you have no risk, right? Okay, but here's, but here's what <laughs> I know. Just because I write it up for, for 550 doesn't mean the seller's going to get 550, even if I do cash out of it. I'm going to go find a buyer, and then I'm going to go back and renegotiate with a seller, and get it down. I'm going to probably knock 50 grand off of it easy. Because, see, the seller only owes 400. I promise you, he'd take 100 grand just as easy to take 150 grand. So that's the deal after the deal. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't even know what to tell you the exit strategy is till we figure out what we're going to do with a seller.
And of course, we can option it as a last resort, and uh, that means you just put it on the market. And uh, in fact, you probably should list it. Don't you wonder why the seller hasn't listed it? This one pay commission. <laughs> Here's where you got to try to quit asking yourself why, 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 why do people do what they, I don't know. Quit worrying about it about 34 years ago. Why, why, why? Why hasn't the seller listed the house instead of letting it get by in three years? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> All right. Well, what's your plan? Yes, try the bank route first, see if they're going to Try the bank route. Hold that mic up close. Uh, try the bank route first, see if they're going to cooperate. Okay, have you guys talked to the seller about that? Not yet. Yes, we did. No, oh, we yeah, you did? That's we did. right. You did. All right. And he's okay with that? Yes. Well, it's in his best interest if they do that. Oh, wait a minute, though. Uh-oh. No. You got a big problem. And that is that he doesn't live in the house. There is no way that bank's going to redo that loan. Sure, it's big. Weekend. He yeah. said, yeah. Uh, they're not going to do it. So we better be working on plan two right away. Now he can go lie to them, but they're going to catch him. Because they're going to send an agent, a BPO agent, out to that house before they finish this negotiation anyway. So that's, uh, well, frankly, we just lost that option. So we better be thinking about plan two here. Plan three and plan four. Hmm? I just gave you one plan, go ahead and get the deed uh, and go get a buyer and pay him later when we get the buyer, bring it current when we get a buyer. But that means that buyer's got to come in with about a hundred grand to get everybody paid. Now that ain't, believe me, that's, that's very likely on a $650,000 house. But until that person comes in with enough money to a minimum bring these payments current, we don't have a sale. That's the less risky, that's absolutely the least amount of risk right there. And if that is your plan, why don't we just option it, not take title to it? But on this one, I want to record a memorandum of option. So no one comes out. Go ahead and make sure this seller doesn't have some investor come in and offer him more money and sell it behind your back. All right? And that's probably my only plan here. Well, I don't know. I could do another offer. <clears throat> Instead of paying the seller 550, what if I give him a choice? Okay, I'll pay you 550, but only after I find a buyer who can come in with enough money to bring these, this loan current. Okay, or um, I'll give you $15,000 right now, cash to mortgage, which means I'll give you 15 grand, take over your debt, and I'll make up your payments when I get a buyer. But I'll buy the house, pay the closing cost, and and you're done. That's what that means. Now, you have no idea what this seller is going to say till you do what? Ask. Make the offer. The seller gets to choose. Do you want a bird in a hand or a bird in a bush? Because we don't get, we're not doing this till we find our buyer. We'll do this next week. Let them decide. Okay? Either way, the smartest thing for you to do is list this thing with a realtor and let them sell it. Let them tell you what to list it for and then let them go ahead and sell it and if they don't think it's worth 630, they want to list it for 600, you're okay with that, aren't you? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Point is to get it sold and cashed out. I would leave the payments behind until I got cashed out. As long as the seller you know, is okay with it, and no attorney's gonna close this without them getting the seller to sign an affidavit that they're okay with. Got it? Mm -hmm. uh, this could turn into a very lucrative deal. Let's say the realtor sells it for 600, and they pay off the 400 that's owed on it, and let's say you gotta give the seller $25,000 even. So, and then you got a real estate commission of what? 36,000. So what is that? 436, 46, 56, 461. That gives you about a hundred and twenty-five, thirty thousand dollar profit. Will that work? That will work. Yes. Wow. Okay. That be is that your first deal? That is our first. That's deal. That's a pretty good first deal. Awesome. That's great. 
Now, just for the record, because we want to play devil's advocate, right? And what if we um, buy the house without putting up any money and we can't get it sold? What do we lose? We lose our entire investment, which is nothing, isn't it? Okay, what if I buy the house and I have to put up fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000? Could I lose that? Well, I could, but really? What, what, if, what if the bank forecloses, puts files on it, can I always go get a second mortgage on it and bring the payments current? Do I always know that in the back of my head? Where am I going to get a second mortgage? One of you, a human. Do you know that the private lenders look just pretty much like you guys? <laughs> They're just people. That's all they are. They're just people. So that's my, I wouldn't do it unless I needed to. If I'm going to cash out of it, why well, go get the private loan on it? If the bank is not pushing me and I'm not near the foreclosure sale, why go pay them? Why bring them current? Don't even bother. Just put it on the market and let the realtor sell it. And let the realtor know how flexible you are. Done. Easy. Easy in, easy out, risk free. Good one. Very Thank good. you. Thank you. That's awesome.